Hey there, it's Kat, and this is Brews and Reviews. In today's video, I'm going to be going through my favourite books and my most disappointing books of 2021. Now, I'm sure at this point you're already kind of sick of seeing these lists, so I kind of wanted to do this just for my own recollection in the future so I can see which books that I loved that I read in 2021 and which books that I was thoroughly thoroughly disappointed by. I don't actually have an even number of books to talk about and there are quite a few books that I've put on my favourites list so I'm not going to go into too much detail and there will definitely be more positive comments on this video than there will be negative so you know that's good right? That's good! These aren't in any particular order so I'm just going to go with the ones that were in front of me so my first favourite, I guess, of the year was Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. And honestly this is the one that kind of changed this series for me. Ironically I haven't actually read any more of the series even though I'm like oh my god this book has changed my mind on this series and made me think that it's gonna be really good and that I just didn't read any more of the series. So hopefully in 2022 I can continue with this and will love it as much as I love this one. I feel like there was a tonal shift in this book and I feel like it became a lot more focused on the fae elements which obviously I enjoy as you'll probably see from the next books that I'm going to talk about but hey that's getting ahead of myself. I really enjoyed the new characters that were introduced in this one and I enjoyed anything that wasn't focused on Kale so that's a good time really. I, I had fun with it and I am glad that I continued to this point because people kept telling me this is where it changed and whether people either started to like it or started to not like it and I am definitely in the camp of starting to like it more. I am really glad that I picked it up. I mean I'm not even really going to talk about these two because I feel like you already know. A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin. I, I read them at the right time. They really just hit a part of me where I was going through some stuff and the characters were going through some stuff and it just really was a good time for me. I mean not a good time to be going through stuff but like <laughs> I really enjoyed these books and I'm so glad that I finally bit the bullet and read them because it was so intimidated by these books because Hades Persephone type retelling which is obviously one of my favourites and then I just got so immersed into the world <laughs> I just want to reread them again. Yeah, these are probably my favourite books of the entire year, particularly Akmath. I just so enjoyed them. I know, I know, it's not literary genius or anything like that but I just read to enjoy books. I'm, I'm not reading to evaluate how well it's going to stand up in the annals of history or anything like that. I just know that I enjoyed them and that is what I read for so yeah. The next on my best books of 2021 list is Slay by Brittany Morris. This book is about a girl who develops a VR game called Slay which is predominantly meant for black players to celebrate black excellence and something happens which results in a player being killed because of something that happened in the game. And then there's a whole debate around Slay and I just feel like this was so impactful. I really love things about VR anyway and I feel like the way that this celebrated black culture from around the world was just really interesting and I definitely recommend it. Okay so now let's mix it up and talk about the first book on my worst books of 2021. I, I want to say most disappointing because I can't necessarily say that they were the worst worst books because I definitely read some things that were really bad but they didn't quite emotionally impact me as much as these ones did in the sense that I was so disappointed that it made it worse because I had had higher expectations or something like that I don't know. So the first book on this list The Fate of the Tealing by Erica Johansson. Nobody is surprised that I put the third book on the Tealing series on this list because I fucking hate this book. The ending, the very very end of this book deserves to go in the bin. I just, just stop it. That's ridiculous. I can't really talk about why I hate this book so much without spoiling it. Just the very end of this book did something that I absolutely hate in books and has a trope that I really just despise and think needs to go in the bin. So <laughs> that's my comments on Fate of the Tealing. I am so disappointed that I even picked this series up for that to be the end of it. So disappointment. Now after that brief interlude, back to a good book. The Atrocity Archives by Charles Strauss. This is a sort of sci-fi mixed with Lovecraftian nightmares and administration. <laughs> it's really hard to describe because there are like multiple sort of short story instances that are all collated into one 
thing. Where this guy works for a secret agency that deal with like Lovecraftian nightmares and really random stuff like that, but also has to deal with random bureaucracy things, like the woman from HR that's like, you are coming in too late! And he's like, oh sorry, I was fighting a monster! So, you know, it was really good, and I am thoroughly excited to continue with this series, and I just feel like it's something different, but something that appeals to the part of me that hates bureaucracy, and if you hate bureaucracy, then you should definitely pick this series up, because I think you'll like it. Another book that I loved in 2021 was Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. So this is an Asian-inspired fantasy about a girl who dresses up as her brother to take on a competition to become the Emperor's tailor. So there's like competition elements to this book, but that's only the first half of the book, and that was honestly the bit that was less interesting to me which I was surprised by because usually I love competition books, but the second half of this book was like a, a adventure quest sort of thing with my favourite character in the book, who I won't spoil things about, but I just, I just really enjoyed it and I'm super excited to read the next one because this one just hit me in the feels and I enjoyed it a lot. Back to the worst books of 2021, we have 55 by James Delargy. This is a thriller set in Australia, and I just really didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the sort of bureaucracy in this one, which is funny because uh, the Atrocity Argos takes the mick out of bureaucracy. This was all of the people that I hate in any sort of job. Like, the managers or the people who are higher up than you in the chain of, you know, business, whatever, who are just assholes to you because you're a lower rank to them, and I just absolutely detest those people and just say things for the sake of saying it because they can and I'm just like, don't be a dick. Also you're trying to save people's lives so why are you like lording yourself over somebody else? I don't know, it was stupid and then the very end of this book had an ending that didn't end, it was kind of like, and this person walked over here and you kind of know what they're gonna find but also the thing that, that happens at the end, I was like, no, why, <laughs> just fuck off, <laughs> it was really annoying and I was really pissed off that I read this book and I suffered through all of the nonsense people to have that be the end because it was so disappointing and just shit and I'm just pissed that I read it. Back to a good book, Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. This book is about a group of documentary people and scientists who go to the Mariana Trench to investigate mermaids there and it's kind of horrory because the mermaids are not like the little mermaid, they are quite nasty and <laughs> big teeth pointed teeth. Anyway, I really recommended it, there's lots of diversity in this book. I particularly enjoyed the autistic female character that was in here that I, I just really liked it. The end was a little bit rushed but I still really rate this. Turns out I'm gonna have to finish the rest of this video later because I'm going on a walk now so if I look vastly different when I finish this video, don't be surprised. I'm back and it is four hours later after I have been on a six and a half mile walk and I am in pain freezing cold and look very dishevelled. But we move guys, we move. So let's get back to this video with another book on my worst slash most disappointing books of 2021 list. And that is The Brides of Hanover Block by Greg Zane. This is the sequel to The Hanover Block which was a weirdly interesting book that explored a descent into madness that was kind of like car crash worthy of looking at. It was very interesting, weird. The second book was, oh no, a big a whole bunch of nope. It, it explored what would happen to the women in this town, whereas the first book explored what was happening to the men in the town. But it took a weird sort of religious turn and I didn't like it and I didn't like any of the people. And then at the end it took a s weird hard left turn and there were SWAT teams and the government and stuff. I, I just didn't enjoy it at all and I was very disappointed because I did like the first one in a kind of weird way but I didn't like this one so. Another book that I loved was The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I'm sure you'll have heard me talk about this one quite a lot recently. I loved it, it was great. It was a stem enemies to lovers romance with a grumpy sunshine character dynamic. I don't know what there's more to say about that, I just enjoyed it a lot. Another book that I disliked was The Goal by L. Kennedy, the fourth book in the Bright You series. And the reason I dislike this book is that it was touted to me as a romance, maybe a sexy time romance, and it was a book about pregnancy and having a baby and people who weren't really sure if they wanted to be in a relationship but felt pressured to be in a relationship and was kind of like, oh, I don't know, do I want to be in a relationship? Don't pressure me, don't pressure me. And then they were sort of in a relationship but they weren't, but they were, 
and there was a baby and there was like morning sickness and stuff and I don't want to read about that. I'm, I'm really not interested in reading about that, especially when I came here for kind of a sexy time romance. Uh, that's not, that's not what I'm here for. So I didn't like it. Back to the books that I loved and we have Proud Fox by J.P. Harker. This is book four in the Caledon Saga and I just really enjoyed this one. It was a really great one to start the year with because one, it's a chunk and I felt really, really accomplished when I had read this one. But also there are so many interesting characters and twists and turns that you just don't see coming and you're like mm. and I just feel like this series has grown so well as it's developed and I just really enjoyed it so I can't wait for the next one of these to come out when I finished this one I was just like no I just have to wait for the next one to be released and it's one of the only series that I've started and will read as it's being released rather than waiting for it all to come out because I just really enjoy it and I feel like I don't forget anything about these characters because they're just so interesting anyway Great, loved it. And we have On the Edge of Gone by Corinna Dalvis. This is a book featuring an autistic main character and it's about a comet that's gonna come and hit the earth and people leaving earth or those that are staying behind. And our main character ends up on the last spaceship that is sort of lingering in earth's atmosphere. I think that this has particularly great autistic representation. I definitely felt seen in it. I felt like there were a lot of things that I related to and it was also that kind of apocalypse end of the world thing which I, I love but I can understand if a lot of people aren't really in the mood to read that right now because you know the world as it is but you know it's a really great book and I recommend it to anyone. Another book that I loved was Priceless by Miranda Silver. This is a sexy time romance and has a bit of a weird premise so I'm not gonna say it on here but I really like the characters and how they grow and how they interact with each other and how you can sort of understand how they end up in the position that they are in that causes the weird premise. Just look the premise up. I can't, I can't say it here, but it's, it's weird, but it was a really good book and I think it was really well written and I liked all of the characters. So yeah, I just recommend it if you're after some, some sexy times. I have one last book that I didn't like and then two that I did. So let's talk about the one that I didn't and that was Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. I had really high hopes for this one and it wasn't necessarily that I don't like this book, which, I don't really like this book but I didn't hate it as much as the other ones in this list. I think it's more of a I was really disappointed in this because I had really high hopes. It's a gender-bent sci-fi retelling of King Arthur who is reincarnated every so many years and it's in like a constant battle to do things and um, it just got weird. I don't think it lived up to its potential and I didn't like a lot of the characters and there was something that happened at the end that felt kind of incesty and I didn't, I didn't so yeah, this one was disappointing to me and I am sad about it because I keep looking at this cover and I think it's so gorgeous and I'm just really disappointed that it didn't live up to the premise and it didn't live up to its cover and I'm just sad about it. So another book that I loved was Something is Killing the Children. This is volume three because I only physically have volume three and I really enjoyed this series. It was one that I got into and sort of wanted to speed right through because I think the first three volumes are a complete like arc and I think the reason I like this so much is that I'm such a big fan of creature features and I like it when big monsters happen. So <laughs> I was never gonna not like this. I was getting more into horror and graphic novels and you know, this hit the spot. So this was a great series. And the last book that I loved in 2021 was Hold Back the Tide by Melinda Salisbury. Again, this is a horror book. It's kind of historical fiction. -y. It's set on the side of a lock and I went into this only knowing what the blurb said about a girl who lives with her father who may also be a murderer. But there's definitely other things that happen creepier things that happen but I don't want to spoil it so I'm not going to go into more of that but if you want a creepy book in a Scottish lock that's sort of historical then definitely check that one out it was really fun it, it definitely has some like horror creepy creature type elements to it that aren't necessarily historical but you know it was really good I enjoyed it it gave me a nightmare it was great anyway I'm going to take my tired ass self and have a nap because that's all I'm good for at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.